Welcome to this episode of Cars Plus. This is our 1976 Chevy pickup truck after rebuilding the steering column. It seems to steer quite nicely. We're going to do a complete teardown and show you how to carefully remove the components so that you can replace the steering universal joint. We've even replaced some bearings. In addition, we'll show you the tools you need to rebuild your GMC truck steering wheel column. We have a lot to cover and it's going to take a while, so stay tuned. We hope you find this video useful. Chevy C10 from 1976 and it's got a tilt GM steering column in it but you notice what's wrong here this thing is flipping back and forth all right here with our steering wheel the first step we've got to do is we've got to take out the allen head screws it's a 5 30 seconds to remove our allen head screws and so we've got to take those all out as a beginning step of removing the steering wheel if you're working with the GM steering wheel, obviously you have to remove it. We're going to show you how this one comes off. Everything else in here other than the removal of the steering wheel is the actual GM parts. And as I often say, I like to lay the parts in the car. And there's going to get to be a lot of parts by the time we get this all undone. And you notice the steering wheel kind of fell down a little bit. That's to be expected with the way this one is put together. So we've got the ring off, steering wheel off, and then you have to remove your two little wires for your horn and the steering wheel itself is removed from the car. Now one of the things about doing this whole assembly, again right now we're taking off the part that's not GM. What we're going to show you can be done at home, obviously I'm doing it here. I'm not going to tell you this is an easy thing to do, but this will show you what's wrong and how to fix it. The next thing we got to do is get our ratchet and remove the big nut holding the rest of the steering wheel mount on. So this big nut's gonna come out next. Right here you'll notice I've drawn an arrow. Now you may have noticed in the other shot that was already here. Well, that's because I've been in here before and found out what was wrong. Because you notice the two sides of this particular piece, if you're using a uh, adapter for a steering wheel on your column, it's probably not the same side to side, so that's why there's an up arrow. This particular nut is the actual GM nut on their part. That's a 7 8 so we've got a 7 8 ratchet to take it off. It's going to come off easy because I've had it off before. And in a moment, we'll show you some of the damage that was done previously by somebody. And we're still able to use this column piece right here because you can't buy a new one. You'd have to buy a used one. And it looked to me like they're running about $90, $100 to get a used one. Well, this is a used one. We're going to try to make this one work. So the first thing was to remove the 7 eighths nut. Next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take out these three bolts temporarily. You'll notice that this is your power line. This is your ground line here. The ground line is fastened directly under this nut. Uh, pardon me, this bolt on this side. So this is the next thing is remove these three bolts. Those are 7 sixteenths. 7 16 deep socket on a ratchet and we're going to take off these particular bolts. Now you have the advantage of watching me and knowing the order and everything goes together. If you didn't have that advantage you'd sure want to keep track of what you were doing with everything but at least by looking at the video you can see how this is all done. A little hard for me even you think you get all that room but my fingers run into stuff. One of three out. That was our grounding wire one. We're going to loosen up the other two, and then we'll get them out. Now, if you had a nut driver handy that was 7 16 you could probably quickly take these out, but I'm going to just do them by hand. So there we go. And that's all removed. Now, right now, we have a spacer washer in here. 
that is not necessary in the end. Theoretically, we will not be reusing that. We had that in here because we knew the steering column was not behaving properly. And it took me quite a while to get a hold of the actual part that we're going to need. So now we've got to pull this, which you see that's on a spline, and you'd have to have a three-jaw puller to pull that. And you go, how the heck are we going to do that? Well, the reason I've pulled off this piece was actually to pull off that piece. That piece goes underneath, as you saw, it goes underneath here, it goes right here. But I can't have it in place because that's not going to work for me to actually pull this. So now that I've got it off, I'm going to put it back. And you'll see why, because you're going to see how I'm going to pull this off without having a three-jaw puller. And sometimes, in real life, as you decide, well, I'll make something work instead of going about buying another item. And in this case, it's not true that I don't have a three-jaw puller. It's true I don't have the three-jaw puller that will work to pull this off and not damage that part. For those who don't have a nut driver, you can always take off your deep socket stick it on here and you can do it that way. It's not quite as convenient as a nut driver, but it'll get the job done. So we're gonna tighten this bolt up by hand. And the next thing I'm gonna do is tighten them all back on so they are tight with the ratchet. And you definitely wanna do this because you don't wanna strip out bolt holes when we pull this steering wheel mount back off. And as I said, I marked this before so you can see there's an arrow and you notice it's not straight up it's off to the side slightly, it's off to the passenger side, and I'm going to remember that, that that's how it has to go back on here. Next thing you got to do is you have to tape up this portion of the steering wheel adapter. because We don't want to screw it up. After the tape, we're going to take our two-jaw puller. Now we have a two-jaw puller probably from the 1920s, and I mean that seriously, it's probably that old. Got it sometime in an old car that I purchased. It just happened to be in it. You really are better off buying old American tools, and I think you're going to find an awful lot of people on YouTube telling you the same thing. Other old tools that are good are German, Swiss, even you can even get some good Japanese stuff. So we fit it on there, and this happens to be an 11 16 on the top of this. And you notice I'm actually using the steering wheel adapter to pull the adapter base off. So that's my method of using a two-jaw puller instead of a three-jaw puller because I don't have the right three-jaw puller for this job. This is the way to do it when you don't have quite the right puller. And there you see how easy it really was to remove. And as you may have noticed, I can pop the legs off of this so it's easy to take it apart. Next up, we got to take out our wire assembly for our horn. This is the power side of everything. Don't lose your spring when you do it. Now you got to take off your plastic piece here. I've had it off more than once, so it's easy. By comparison, a little flat blade screwdriver and you can pop it off. You can get these from, uh, you know, like LMC truck if you need one. Now we've gotten down here to where it gets hard. One of the things that's hard is you have this snap ring down in here. And this snap ring is a wire snap ring and it's holding everything together. And that puppy can be very hard to get out. Now I'm gonna go get a jeweler's screwdriver and an awl and we'll see how much work we have to go to to pop this. And the big thing is don't lose it. You're going to need that piece. I've actually got a couple of jeweler's screwdrivers. We're going to see how much difficulty this is to get out. And I am not going to tell you that the removal of this piece is easy. Because I haven't found it to be so. This may take some real doing. I did better with the awl. You notice I've got it up. The problem is it wants to go right back in there. So now i got to get it up and i got to tease it off all the way around. way around. Let's see if another screwdriver will help me. There, it's out. So now this is your lock ring and this is your lock pin. And you notice if I turn the key the lock pin goes down. So that's the thing that's locking your steering column when you actually are parking the vehicle. Next this assembly comes out. You notice we've got this using the steering wheel we're using. This is to the driver's side of the car. 
this is your method of transferring the power up to the actual horn button. So that's what that is. That's got to come out. Pull the spring off right there. Keep that aside. Then you're going to want to take out your turn signal. And remove the actual turn signal lever. And that's out. Again, I'm keeping everything inside the truck here so I can find it again. Next, take off your hazard. And this is the one I keep tending to forget, is to take off the hazard. And with the vehicle with the steering wheel that loose, I wouldn't drive it down the highway. There are three screws holding your turn signal switch in. Now these are not, two of these are not original screws. Because whoever had been in here before had worn the threads out. So I replaced them. And to still use the column, what I did was use a couple of screws that were actually self-tappers and had bigger threads. And you can see, then I could actually come back and use a large thread screw that would work. And this, of course, you can see moves, like you know it's going to, but you got to move it far enough to get to the one screw. Because one of the screws will be a little hidden. So I got along those pliers and we can pull these screws. There you can see the self-tapper that I used to actually fix things when I had to fix it up. And hopefully the other one will just lift out of here. There, now we got that loose. With it loose, you have these wires here. And I'll tell you about that situation in just a minute, why there's a ball bearing running around here it would be possible to go underneath and disconnect the wiring. I'm not going to do it that way because it's just it's just too much hassle. The reason you have this ball bearing, and there's another one here, is because we had a ball bearing part fail in here, and the way they make the actual bearing is why it would fail. It is open on one side, sort of, and if it in any way has a teeniest little break, the bearing's little ball bearings come out and so that's why I got a couple little ball bearings and I'm going to get a magnet and pull them out of there. All right I'm going to pick up these couple of little loose ball bearings with a magnet. That I'm going to leave in the truck for now. I don't think we need them. I think they are actually leftovers from the broken bearing that I found previously but at least they're out. We have this little ring piece and it does go this direction. You notice that the chamfer is away from you that's how it has to go in there. This is your little retainer that you happen to have for your upper bearing, the uppermost bearing closest to the steering wheel itself. This is the spring that goes on top of it. Now the problem is, is you might think it goes together with this piece in there, which is incorrect. It doesn't go inside. The way it goes and when I first dropped it in the video, I dropped it in upside down. I had to go back and turn it upside right. This is the front of the truck. Right there is the front of the truck. So all the slotted sections go to the front of the truck, and your spring rests on top like that. So the spring rests on top just like this. Be sure you put this in the right way. If you don't put it in the right way, there's not enough spring tension, and you won't hold the upper bearing in place. So remember, slots to the front of the truck, and then this piece, your spring goes on top. Now we're going to have to start taking out some of the other interesting little components. I'm going to get a flashlight and light up and show you how we pull the lock right out. Here's the flashlight, and here's a slot right here. And you notice I've got a large jeweler screwdriver, fairly large for jewelers. And you can push down on that piece right there in the slot. You push down. And you, maybe you can see it's moving, but I guarantee it is moving. Push down on it. i got to set down the flashlight. But you're going to push down on that. And you got to keep it kind of held down. <sighs> the most trouble I've had with this. What is going on? There it is. And I always leave the keys in it when I slide it out. Now you'll notice there are three bolts here. All three of those bolts have to be undone. And they're star drives. We have a T30 star drive. And it's not much once you get it started. You can just undo it real easy. And you'll want to take all three of them out. All right, we've got the star drive that we use. Now we're gonna use the long nose and pull these special screws out. And if I can get it without the star drive, I will. 
If I can't, then we'll use that and get it. There's one other thing to know here. The one screw is longer than the other two. And that's why the screw is taking more time. I may still have to take it out some, but that's what the difference is, is the upper screw is actually longer. And if you look at the way the housing is screwed down, it does sort of make sense. That's what you've actually got here. And if I can get this one out all the way, which it should be totally loose at this point, it's probably just wanting to hang up on stuff. The three screws are removed. The last screw, what would happen is this would fall down a bit and it was just catching. I had to actually pull up a bit and remove the screw. You notice this piece is now totally loose. However, you got to take out your tilt lever, which unscrews over here on the side. If it's stuck, you'll notice there are flats here, and you'll use the flats to get it to loosen up. This entire housing can come forward and down. And I'm just letting it hang there. And I had another one of these wonderful little ball bearings fall on the ground. And so I picked it up with the magnet. Move it out of the way. Now you're down here in this, and this is generally pretty messy. This particular unit is your lock spring unit. It's this part. And also, what's going on? Notice if I pull on this shaft, everything's loose. And you think, well, you took that spring out, which was providing the tension, but we had that problem even with the spring in there. And we're slowly getting to where the problem is, but we're still not there. The first problem I had found with this is this particular bearing that I have right here had to be replaced. There is a, a bearing that's identical on the opposite side down in here. You'll see it as we get down. This bearing, you'll notice, has the black retainer ring, which is nothing more than plastic, basically, or certainly a very light metal, but I think it's actually a plastic in these things. Uh, no wonder they kind of wear out. And it has the metal ring. It only goes in here one way, and that is with the black band and the metal ring out this way, and your bearing, your little ball bearings that way. If it's not in that way with the ball bearings away from you and you put it the other way, they'll definitely come out. If you need new bearings, quality replacement parts, Crown, established 1963. What's in here is this is part number 8351005. It is supposedly just for a Jeep steering column, and I believe I got this one from Summit Racing, including the shipping and everything. I think it was under 30 bucks. It fits exactly in the GM column. I think it's the same, it's the same parts, and they don't tell you that it'll fit the GM stuff, but it does. Next step, you have to have a big flat blade screwdriver, and you gotta push down and turn, and you'll notice there are bumps. So putting it back, you would put it back in there and you push really hard and turn the other way. So do you expect to push quite hard, especially when you're putting it back? You take off that little cap and you take out this spring. That's your tilt spring. Located on this complicated Zamac casting we've got here, there's a pin on this side and a pin on this side. I'm trying to light up and show the pin right here. So the other one's exactly 180 degrees out. Those two pins have to be pulled in order to pull the ZMAC case casting off of here. In order to pull those, you need an 832 screw. Now I'm sure there really is a tool to do this. We don't have the tool. I'm not going to buy the tool for it. What an extreme waste. Screw your 832 screw in. You may or may not have to use a screwdriver. You notice I was able to do it without. Take a pry bar. You want a pry bar. Notice that's not a screwdriver. That's a pry bar. Take the pry bar. Pull out. Ta-da. I pulled the pin. Now, if things are corroded, you'll have more trouble. I haven't had any trouble at all taking these out of this particular column. And as I said, even the first time I did it, they just come right out. So screw in, and we're going to use the pry bar and pull it out. And... I'm going to leave the screw in one of the pins so I've got it for later. Now this is no longer actually fastened. It's going to be somewhat of a problem. The reason it is is because there are two teeth up in here 
and they relate to your system for actually tilting the column. And those teeth are engaged at the moment. And one of the funny things is, is the angle to get this to screw back in is odd. And I have to figure it out each time. But you can screw it in now that you've got everything apart. And you see you can flip things around. And by pulling like that towards you, you can actually remove the piece and take it out of the way. So now we've got it. Here's your other set of bearings down here on the bottom. And you notice they've fallen out at the moment. But I'm going to flip everything down and I'm going to take this dirty bearing piece and I'm going to put it down here. And when that fell out, now we have to find our little ball bearings again, but we've saved some that we've got out of it. So we've kind of got those available, but now we've finally gotten to our problem. Now notice on the side here, we have this particular unit and how it's mounted it has to stay like that when you're done. It can be taken off. See, I can take it right off of there, but ultimately it has to be like that when you're done and putting everything back together. It's one of the harder things to do is keep it in place when you're putting that Zamac assembly back on there. But here is our problem. Look at that. This is the problem right here. This universal joint is shot. And we did all of that to get down to that universal joint. So, you know, that's how it comes off. But the universal joint is what we've been after in this whole thing. It is done. We have to replace this assembly. It's just had it. It's worn out. And so, even though you look at all the other stuff, look at all that play I've got down in here. It's not supposed to be doing this. It's supposed to move up and down side to side, but it should move back and forth like that. So this is the part I had to get to solve everything. And now we're going to go about how to replace that. I'm going to show you what the part actually is. Here's the little part. And believe it or not, GM still makes this. There's your part number, 26057095. You can still buy this. This is a real brand new genuine GM part. Notice 2020 GM LLC. So it's been used for years. They're still making this thing. We're going to wipe off these parts here with lacquer thinner. The reason we're going to do that is I got to get it clean enough to mark it. As GM warned you in the instructions for this little assembly, to mark it or you'll probably end up 180 degrees out. So we're going to put a mark on this one, if we can, right there. But I don't really particularly like that mark. I think I'm going to put a piece of tape on it. I'll wrap the tape all the way around here and that's going to be possible to slide so I got to be careful not to slide and yes I'm going to mark it more than one way we're going to put this on the driver's side line we're going to try putting a line here and I think I may mark it with a dot of paint here too I put red lacquer on the side just to make sure it would stay marked so now, theoretically, you're supposed to be able to rotate this 90 degrees and get this to disengage. That's what GM says, but we're going to have to figure that out because it claims you can flip this up or down 90 degrees, and so far I'm not finding that to be true. Here we have the new assembly located in the part, and you're going to say, why don't you show us how to do that? The amount of effort we went to to do this, and I, my son and I messed with it about 45 minutes, is incredible. Now I'm going to explain to you some things that are real important. The edges of this piece, the metal edges, take any burrs off. Found out if we had half together that there were burrs on there, took the burrs off with the moto tool and a cut off disc. That made a big difference. But you'll notice we've safety wired it together. The reason it's safety wired together is the new one has a different spring system. Here's the one that was in there. And you can see it just has this little flat spring and these two parts. And it's not doing anything anymore. When you put it together, it does absolutely nothing that it's supposed to. There's no tension on anything. There's no tension at all. It doesn't provide any tension anymore. This has a tremendous amount of tension. It's got a totally different spring design in it. And we're going to show you the instructions. Trish will show you that in the video. 
there's a tool in there, a job tool, you probably want to buy the tool. If you don't want to buy the tool and you want to do it by the difficult method, you have to squeeze these two plastic pieces together with a spring in the center and rotate it 90 degrees also. That provides tension out and rotational tension. Now, the way we did it is on the side that has circles. There's a circle on this side. There'd be a circle on the opposite side. We used a small C-clamp, and we C-clamped it together. And while my son was C-clamping, I was turning the unit and holding it 90 degrees. We carefully got it C-clamped together so it would hold, and then we ultimately ended up getting it slid in here just enough that I could then safety wire it, which you see I've safety wired it twice, and so then the part is at least in here. But the problem is you have to rotate it 90 degrees. So when you start out, your safety wire is actually going to be over here. And you have to rotate the whole assembly 90 degrees to lock it in place. That's very hard to do because these want to become misaligned. The way I ultimately did it was to put my hand on it like this, the heel of my hand, and to pry up with this long screwdriver on the opposite side. And very carefully work it into place. Now all of that I told you took a good 45 minutes. Next thing we're going to do is cut the safety wires because they're no longer necessary. They're the only thing that was holding it together. It's a case where you really love to have a safety wire kit just to do that. But you see that now rotates in there but it has super tension on it which is what we want to have. And so that part will rotate. Now you're supposed to have lithium grease in here. I have pre-lubed it a little. I'm going to actually put a lot more stuff on it when it's together and I can move it around safely. I doubt we could have handled it with as much lithium grease as supposed to be on it. There's even supposed to be some grease between it. We can do all of that even in place. I know I can get it in there even if I got to use a toothpick. But I didn't totally grease it beforehand because it would have been really hard to do. In order to put the steering column back together now, you have to be able to assemble it and rotate it 90 degrees. We'll show you that in the vehicle, but what's been done here, we have the truck up on our heavy duty floor jack. We've then grabbed onto our front tire and we've slightly turned the tire to the passenger side. Now, because that's the only way we're gonna put this together now. Now I'm gonna lift this up for the moment. You notice we have our little yoke here it used to be running sideways, exactly like this. It's now positioned this way. The reason it has to be positioned that way is we have to put our yoke in and then rotate it 90 degrees because it's the only way you can assemble it. Now, in order to make sure I'm putting it back together right, you remember I marked it in red, and I cleaned off this ear. This one's still full of grease. This one's cleaned off on the end, so I know this red mark goes with that ear. So I'm going to set it in here like this. And I'm going to give it a little hit and rotate it 90 degrees. Now it won't come out. It's locked in place. Now you notice when you pull on it, it'll go up and down. But I don't have any fore-aft movement at all anymore in this. I just have this up and down moving because nothing's supported right now. But there's no fore-aft. There's only the up and down because we don't have our support on. So now what we're going to do is we're going to turn our wheel back so our red mark faces right off to the side like it did before. So we'll go up and we'll hand turn the wheel into place. I'm going to hand turn the wheel back and I'm going to do just a little bit because I checked it up above, didn't turn it quite enough, turn it a little bit more, go back and check again. First thing we're going to do is take our tape off because the tape's now going to be in the way. We don't need it anymore. Other way I know this is right besides having the red this top groove in this one I could tell was different. There is a marked groove here that is different from the other grooves right there. And so I could tell that's where I started with. Now you have to pick up your part down here, making sure you race this all together. And you have to get ready to put it up here. But there's a part that you do not want to forget. And I showed it to you before. I'm going to grab it off the floor. And we showed you how it goes. We got to get our piece back up in here. And I really do have to have a flashlight for this so it's in the right place. Because it goes down on a pin right there. If you look down in there, there's a pin. I'm trying to show you where the pin is. 
I'll bring the flashlight back. There's a pin right back here. That's the pin. I'm touching it with the back of the part. The part sits on the pin. Then you've made sure your brace is together and remind you to make sure it's together. You're going to bring this whole assembly up, trying to be careful not to knock things apart, which is harder than you can imagine here. And you bring it back, and what you have to do is when you pull on the handle, these two lever arms on the top, they come down. And you got to get all the way back and get on that pin. And you'll see that pin back in here. There's the pin running across. Those two lever arms got to go under the pin. So this is a futzy little job to do. You kind of tip up and you're kind of pushing to get it in there. You got to get them both to engage. And I just got them both to engage. So that's pretty much what you do. Obviously, I can't show you real well, but it's sort of pull on the handle tip up and push back all at the same time in order to put that back together. Next thing is we have to start realigning where our pins go in the side. And I may have to switch screwdrivers to do this, we'll see. Because you gotta get it lined up so you can reinstall the pins. You'll remember the pins that we pulled, the two that we pulled using a screw. We're trying to light up the side of this to show you once it's on here what you actually have to have accomplished. There's a little spring here. The spring must be underneath the actual arm. This is that lever arm assembly that you have to keep on the pin on the side. That's this assembly here. There's the spring. This, the lever arm assembly has to have this portion of this gear assembly in it, just like this. So you can kind of see how that works. You also have your lock mechanism. That's what this is all doing, your lock mechanism for your steering column. All these pieces have to be lined up when you get it together. It's difficult to do. It'd probably take you three, four times. If you're having troubles with your bearings and they start to come out, you're gonna have to put them in with some sticky grease. And I've got a can of wheel bearing grease that's probably as old as me. I got from my father and that's what I used to stick the bearings back together so you can put them in. I uh, to tell you, it took about four times to get this right with everything together the way it's supposed to be. Now we're gonna do the pins like I was talking about. To do the pins, you gotta get the holes lined up in the side so that everything goes together. And you notice I left my screw in here for the moment. And you get it lined up the way it's supposed to be. And then you try to get your other one in the other side, which I'm gonna to have to probably be in front of the camera instead of it being here. Nope, I got that one real easy. So that one just slid in. So now this one on this side isn't in quite all the way yet. I'm going to undo the screw. And then what you do is you get yourself a small ball peen hammer or a small brass hammer. All right, you see this one's not quite in. I'm just going to tap it in. If you have to do anything more than that, you don't have it together right. So that's hardly tapping it. That's why you can get away with a ball peen and not a brass hammer. All right, so now we've got this assembly back together to that point. Next, you have to put on your tilt spring. And notice you want this end in. That's going to run on the pin down there. So you slide that in. You put the little spring cap back on. Line it up with the holes. Now you've got to find your big screwdriver. And you're going to have to push hard. It's going to seem like you're pushing harder than when you took it out. Push real hard. And give it a turn to the right. And now that's locked back in. That provides for when you, you see that's your spring to move it up and down when I release the pressure. So that's what that's for. So now we've got that on. Now we gotta bring our housing back up. And the problem you're going with the housing is off, you gotta take your tilt lever again. Because the tilt lever's gotta go in after the housing's on. But you have to have the tilt lever on to do all the things we've done. So the tilt lever comes on and off during the process. All right, now we gotta get this back in here. And this has this is your lock, remember. That's gotta come up through the hole correctly. So we gotta get all of that to line up now. There. I got it back together. We can put our 
arm back in here again. Okay, and you can tighten that up with the flats later on. We can start putting in our screws here. One at each location here. And those are your star drive, your quarter star drive screws. And we'll screw them down most of the way, and we'll come back and tighten them up. Now I'm going to tighten them down. Right direction on the ratchet here. That's fastened back on. Next, you can push your wires down inside and you bring your little signal light switch back in position and solve all that problem. Those are all in. Next, you can take your hazard flasher switch that you use and you can screw that back on the side. It's a fairly long screw. Now you can also take your key assembly and put that back. Get that so that this tab, this is the tab we pressed on to release it. It goes back in. You just push it in like that and it's not going to come back out unless we release that tab. It's now in there and turns just like it's supposed to and it also moves our lock post here. So that's something you really want to check because at this point, even though you thought you did it right, you could have screwed it up and you don't want to put everything back together and realize, oh, I didn't get the lock post on there correctly. Next, put back your nifty little signal light switch. Okay, that's in. You see everything works. Be sure you re-lube this if you haven't done it. Now, as I told you, I've been in here, so I've lubed it, but the lube is, what, 50 years old? Probably a good idea to lube that if you have to. Now, you notice we have a little bit of up and down, but we have almost no fore and aft. This little teeny bit of up and down, some of that disappears as we continue our assembly. This little guy goes next. This is your other contact, by the way. That's your other contact for your power coming up to your steering. So you're going to want to put your piece back in about like that. And that provides your power again up to your horn. And oops, I almost did it wrong. Forgot my spring. Pick the spring off and put that where it goes because you got to have the spring in there. So out the spring, we don't take up the last little bit of tension. So the spring must be in there first, then this piece. Now we're set up with that. Next, we've got to, oops, we did miss something else. We did too. We missed our little spring cap. This is one of those reasons you go back and you constantly check your work and I keep looking on the floor, did I miss something? Missed the spring cap. So all the slotted sections go to the front of the truck and your spring rests on top like that. So the spring rests on top just like this. Be sure you put this in the right way. If you don't put it in the right way, there's not enough spring tension and you won't hold the upper bearing in place. So remember, slots to the front of the truck and then this piece, your spring goes on top. You want the spring cap so it runs against there and the spring doesn't chew up anything. So now we've got all that. And this unit only goes on one way. It's, you wouldn't think it's different, but it is. It's gotta go on just the way you took it off. You see it goes like that. That would be how I'd get the lock pin. Just a little shift over. But now we got to have a way to compress all this because you remember we had that little lock ring right here. And that thing has got to be started on here. And then once we get it started, which I'm going to have to get my jeweler's screwdriver, once we get it started, then we're going to show you how we're going to actually compress it on there. And you can see I'm trying to tease the little spring right back on here. So you got to have it started like that. So now we've got the assembly started. Now we've actually got to get it on there. I'm going to show you how I go about doing that. Now to put this back together, I've got a regular size nut instead of the thin nut that's actually used with the steering column. 
I've also got a tube, which will give you dimensions off of it, and we've got an extra washer in there. Hopefully I've got enough, and as we screw it down, we snap the little snap ring in place eventually. And if we don't, we'll have to add more stuff, but I think we have enough to do it. Now that's as far as I can go with that setup. I'm going to release it and see if I got enough. If I don't, I'll have to add a more washer or something to actually get it down there far enough. Nope, didn't get it quite far enough. You saw it pop back, so I'm going to have to get myself another washer. So we can get it to push down just a little further than we did it. So we'll take it back off. Find another washer around here that I can get a little more depth when I'm pushing down. We finally got it assembled here. And I had to keep switching until I found a combination long enough. So remember I used a regular size nut. I've used a washer, which would be about a standard thickness washer. The other thing I've used is a tube I've got split in half. It's longer than the other tube I was using before. I just kept bottoming out and I wasn't getting it pushed in. Now I'm going to probably have to get a different screwdriver to get this off because this split tube tends to get stuck on here. It's one of the reasons I was trying to avoid it in the first place. And so I'll have to pry it off with another screwdriver, which I'll do, and then we'll get back and we'll put the rest of this together. Next up, we have to have our little plastic piece that goes on here. And you can kind of see there are ears here and here that they've got in place. So there's two and there's two. And you have to get your ears over those two spots. It also happens to line up this way. So you get it on, you just sort of, sort of snap it back in place. I could get one that's more perfect, but nobody's going to see this. It still functions, so I'll just use that particular piece. And it comes out just fine. Now, we have to go to the trouble of putting together the rest of the steering column. You remember we had an arrow in here for up. And we have to get everything to line up. And this was sort of at, at an angle. So we're going to do this as by taking it apart first with our 7 16 and we'll disassemble this and do this one piece at a time. All right, we've got our actual mount for the steering wheel. We've got to put it on. Notice the hole lines up with our power point that's coming up for our steering. So that's where your power is. So you just slide that back on there, and that's pretty much how it should have been looking for us. Now we're going to find our wire and our spring. You need to put the spring in first, obviously, and you're going to have to put your wire in here. And it's got a little post on it. The little post goes in the slot, and then you rotate it to retain it. So now it's retained down in there. So that's the wire for that. Now we're going to take off our tape off of our steering wheel cover steel piece that goes in here, and we'll put it together. We have to have the steel piece, get our wire fed through, that's why we already put the wire in, much easier to do at that point, point. and you see how that's going to rotate a bit. That's also why I added this little extra heat shrink, because even though this is put together correctly, it's almost just a teeny bit offline. It's not going to be a problem, because this is actually not going to rub against there, I just wanted to make sure that was going to be fine. So we'll put that there. Now, we have to take our part our steering wheel is going to mount to, and we set that on here, and we have to get everything to line up, and we start grabbing the bolts and putting them in. Now, we're only going to put two of them in for the moment, because the third one is the one that has to have the ground wire on. And I just want to get this held in place before I do the ground wire one, because that's the worst one to work with. So we'll put that one on, we'll put this one on, we have two on here, and I'm just finger tightening those for a moment. Alright, now we will start our ground version. 
So we've got the ground one on this side. And you know, the funny thing about this, when you get all three of these in here, this one seems too close to that area, but that's how that's made. It's like, well, it does seem a little close for tightening up, but that's how it is. And the reason I only finger tight it, because I have to get the third one started. And it's definitely the hardest to start just because you're screwing around with that wire on it. Finger tight. And now, we'll go back and get our 7 16 ratchet to tighten these up the rest of the way. And I tend to do this one first because it just seems a little close to this particular point compared to the other two. We'll come back and do these. We don't have the level of floppiness we used to have, and we're still not totally tight because we don't have our nut on here. We're going to put our nut in. Our nut on there. And now it's not floppy like it was. So that's on. I'm just making sure everything's going to turn okay, and if it's not going to turn okay, I am going to put a washer in it, which I might do yet, because you can put a washer underneath this, and the thing I'm only concerned about is keeping the gap so that it doesn't actually rub, and I think I probably will put the washer back in. So I'll this assemble, and I'm going to throw a washer underneath this component here and make sure there's a little more room because I don't want any rubbing on the actual tilt column. Now we're going to put our electrical contacts back on here and just press on. And these are the small style, which, whoops, I think are harder for me to use. There, I got it on there. And now I have excess wire on purpose, just to make it a little easier on myself. And I gotta figure out which way I gotta put it back on here so that it's right. Aha, that's the way it's gotta go. And then we're going to put the Allen head screws back in here. And it's a little futzy to get it lined up initially, but that's all there is to putting the steering wheel back together. So that's about the end of fixing this. All right, so we have the steering column all back together. I will not tell anybody that this is an easy thing to do. It's a hell of a lot of work, but it is something you can do yourself if you want to go to the trouble and you really need to do it. What I'd recommend, because I learned the hard way, on the age of the vehicle, get that universal kit that we showed you, as well as get the bearing kit. Just replace all the stuff. I'd get the extra little tool. I did come up with a way to do it without it, but to be frankly honest, it's very, very difficult, and I wouldn't recommend doing it that way. I would recommend getting the tool, but you can do it without it. And I've shown you that, yes, you can actually do that. This makes a huge difference because before I could pull this steering column back and forth, it will not pull now. So we have fixed the universal joint, steering column's done. Now we can maybe drive the truck again. We hope you've enjoyed this video. At Cars Plus, our mission is to teach and preserve automotive history and to publish how-to videos. We believe that the past is part of our future. If you share the same sentiment, please like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe and tap the notification bell so that you can enjoy more of our videos.